Join me as we count down 10 of the currently most popular board games from all the internet, including some extra special surprises that are gonna be thrown into the mix. It's all coming up next, so let's get started. Hey, I'm Chaz Marler from Pair of Dice Paradise, and welcome to this month's Top 10, which is based on BoardGameGeek.com's hottest games list over the past 30 days. This is the list of the games that are generating the most traffic and discussion on the website. The higher and longer that a game remains on the hottest games list, well, the higher it ranks in our Top 10 for the month. Now, 141 different games made their way onto the hotness list over the course of this past month, and we're going to be looking at the Top 10 of them. Starting with... Dropping down five spots, but staying in the top ten, in spot number ten, is Azul. For an abstract game, Azul has been really, really big. But if this tile-laying game still isn't big enough for you, well, then you'll be glad to hear that, to commemorate Azul receiving the Spiel des Jahres nomination, the game's publisher ran a pre-order last month for a giant version that's twice as big as the original. In this version, Azul's components have been enlarged by 200%, providing players with a very unique play experience. And to complement the larger size, the original player boards have been replaced with neoprene mats, and it comes also with a custom-designed suitcase! A whole suitcase to carry the thing in, patterned after the Azul cover art, and then it has removable tray inserts in that suitcase, and just... suitcase! Now, the pre-order period for the giant version of Azul ended in late June, but as of the time of this recording, the giant edition can still be purchased on Next Move Games' website at $300 a pop. Now, Azul has been big in our countdown for several months, but will this big version of it be just as popular? We'll find out in months to come. Making its first official appearance on the countdown in spot number 9 is The Mind. In this game, players will be dealt a hand of cards from a deck containing cards numbered 1 through 100. And then they simply need to play their cards to the center of the table in numerical order. The players have to do this without communicating in any way. Not uh, verbally and not like a big wink or nothing. Like stone cold, just with their mind. Now, The Mind has only been available in Europe until just recently when Pandasaurus Games brought it over to the States just last month. And for being such a simple little card game, The Mind has seemed to consistently capture the attention of everyone that I've introduced it to. So whether or not The Mind has the staying power to remain in our top 10 for months and months and decades and eons, you, you get the point. It, it, it's probably no Gloomhaven. But regardless, I still recommend giving this neat little card game a try. Moving up from spot number 39 to 8 this month is the upcoming Eclipse Second Dawn of the Galaxy, which is a new, revised version of the Eclipse base game that debuted back in 2011. The Second Dawn version includes new graphic design, miniatures for ships and other units, custom plastic inlays and combat dice, and some streamlined rules, along with an introductory short story that provides more background and kind of fleshes out the world of Eclipse. The Kickstarter campaign for Second Dawn is currently scheduled to launch July 10th, so if this edition of the game seems interesting to you, be sure to check it out once its Kickstarter launches later this month. Pole vaulting up the hotness list from spot number 119 to 7 this month is the fantasy exploration game Solomon Kane, which is based on the stories by Robert E. Howard, who also created Conan. Solomon Kane is a narrative-style adventure game featuring cooperative storytelling, resource management, and lots, and I mean lots, of 35mm miniatures. In the game, players take on the role of various invisible virtues embodying the powers of good and light. Players will then use their altruistic abilities to assist Mr. Solomon Kane in his quest to overcome the forces of darkness. The game plays out over the course of multiple chapters, each of which has multiple versions that can play out. So the designers with this approach are hoping that this variety will make for a truly unique gameplay experience. Solomon Kane's Kickstarter campaign ended just this last week, with the game estimated to become available in July of 2019. 
regaining some ground on the top 10 by settling in at spot number six this month is Spirit Island, published by Greater Than Games and designed by R. Eric Roos. Eric Roos was recently interviewed on episode number 33 of the Thoughtful Gamer podcast. This episode of the podcast features an in-depth interview that touches on many different things, including the thought behind Spirit Island and the thought process that went into the game's design. If you're a fan of Spirit Island or engaging conversations in general, I recommend checking out episode number 33 of the Thoughtful Gamer podcast to hear all about it. We're halfway through the countdown, and if you've been enjoying it, or at least it hasn't made your eyes bleed, consider hitting the thumbs up icon and clicking that little subscribe button. Every little bit of support helps, including the support that Pair of Dice Paradise receives from the backers of its Pod Pledge fundraising page. Videos like this are made possible by viewers like you who support the channel. So thank you, I really appreciate it. But now, Wipe away your eyes, or wipe away to just clean your eyes in, in general, because it's time to feast those peepers on the second half of the countdown. <laughs> Holding steady in the middle of the top 10 once again this month at spot number five is Scythe. Now, one reason why this game, which came out back in 2016, continues to appear in the top 10 is because its designer, Jamie Stegmeier, refuses to sit still. He's just a vibrating mass of game design. And just last month, Stonemeyer Games held a contest to allow players to get involved designing a new set of scenarios. In the contest, which ran from June 8th to 15th, Scythe fans were invited to submit a design for an encounter card that would go along with a specific illustration. The publisher is now in the process of reviewing the submissions and selecting their favorites, which will be printed in a promo pack of 32 new encounter cards in several months from now. So, even with three expansions under its belt, there is still more content to come for Scythe. While putting together these top 10 videos, I often hope that they're going to help introduce viewers to some new games that they either may not have known about or haven't tried yet. And some of the responses I've received in the comments suggest that this has been the case, which is very, very gratifying. It's cool. However, I've discovered that I myself am not immune to being intrigued by games that appear on this list as well, as has become the case with the game that continues to hold spot number four on the list, Arkham Horror the Card Game. Now this game has appeared on our countdown every month but one over the past year, and over that year it has chip, chip, chipped away at my resolve to the point where I'm considering switching to it as the LCG I follow and invest in and just jump it in with both, both, both feet. <sighs> and one of the reasons why is because it seems like it plays pretty well single player, even if potentially more difficult when doing so. And that's why for this month's main big question, which is this thing I'm just making up to do, I want to ask the Arkham Horror card game players out there if they recommend playing this game solo. And if so, if there's a general consensus of which investigator or investigators it's suggested new players use when doing so. Plus any other tips on how you can do really, really well at the game. If you have any tips, be sure to share them in the comments below. But just know that each comment posted is likely to erode my resolve just a little bit more until I do break down and dive, dive right into this game. A game which I understand has, has quite, a, quite a few expansions to invest in at this point too. Finishing out the month in spot number three on the countdown this month is The Seventh Continent by Sirius Pulp. In this choose-your-own-adventure-styled exploration board game, inspired by the Fighting Fantasy book series, players will discover a wild new land by exploring a library of event-driven cards. Now, to date, The Seventh Continent has only been available for purchase through the Kickstarter campaigns that Sirius Pulp has run. This obviously has left some who are looking for a copy of the game to have to wait patiently in anticipation for the next time it becomes available. Well. If you're one of those who's been waiting for the right time to obtain a copy of the game, make note that the pledge manager for the Seventh Continent's most recent Kickstarter is reopening on Tuesday, July 3rd and running through July 31st. During this time, it's going to allow those who didn't participate in the campaign to purchase a base box, expansions, and even some of the game accessories, but while supplies last. But if you miss out during July, Sirius Pulp has also announced that their own online store, which will carry copies of The Seventh Continent, is currently scheduled to open for business 
in 2019. Spot number two this month is claimed by the ever-present intergalactic economy territory building game, Terraforming Mars. There seems to be at least one bit of new Terraforming Mars news each month, and this time is no exception, with the announcement of its upcoming mini-expansion, Prelude. In Terraforming Mars Prelude, players will get to choose from Prelude cards that will just jumpstart the terraforming process or boost their corporation in different ways. The expansion also has five new corporations and seven project cards that thematically fit the early stages of terraforming. Now, this expansion can be combined with any other Terraforming Mars expansions or variants and is currently scheduled for an August release. And finishing off our top 10 in spot number one for a 10th month in a row is the top ranked, critically acclaimed, award winning game, Gloomhaven. This role playing adventure game has just dominated the top of the hotness list for over a year, in part because it's just cram packed with enough content to keep people engaged and talking about it month after month. But you know what? Soon, there's going to be even more content for Gloomhaven available, because the upcoming Gloomhaven Forgotten Circles expansion, the first expansion for Gloomhaven, is going to become available, and it features 20 new scenarios that take place after the events of the original Gloomhaven campaign. It also introduces a new character class, the Aether Diviner, and chronicles her attempts to prevent an upcoming impending calamity that's introduced in the expansion. The expansion also features seven new monster types, including three bosses, and 14 new items. Collect them all! So if you enjoy playing Gloomhaven, keep an eye out for its Forgotten Circles expansion coming out soon. I'm sure that this expansion is going to provide the gaming community with even more about Gloomhaven to talk about, including me, who apparently is destined to talk about this game every single month for all of the foreseeable eternity. And there you have it, your list of the top 10 most popular board games as of July 2018. For more top 10 countdowns, be sure to check out this playlist that's just chock full of them. And for more videos about board game news, reviews, and commentary, be sure to subscribe and check out the other Pair of Dice Paradise content on this channel as well. Until next time, I've been Chaz Marler, and take care. If this tile laying game isn't still big enough for you, then I have to be done and shop that you can bear a bun a bun. Which ran from June 8th to 15th, but it did it in reverse order from the 8th to 15th. Is that no, that's what I said. I don't even know the words that are coming out of my mouth in the order order they're they're coming out in. Seven this month is the fantasy exploration game Silmarillion Sil 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 Cane. You play Gandalf. In this choose your own adventure style exploration board game and inspired by the fantasy fighting, fantasy flight, fight, flight or flight, the fantasy fight or flight series of Gloomhaven. Keep an eye out for its Forgotten Circles expansion coming out soon. I'm sure that this expansion will provide expansions. My mouth is full of bees.